Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here and welcome back to the Art of Photography. I want to talk a little bit in this video about Roloflex and I have my Roloflex MX EVS Twin Lens Reflex with me. Um, one of my favorite cameras, one of the coolest ones in my collection I think and this has been such a joy to shoot on. I've done a lot of photographs on this over the years and I, the news came out about two weeks ago. Um, I saw the story run on Petapixel and I'll link up to everything in the show notes so you can check it out. But the news came out that Roloflex had gone out of business. Uh, Petapixel ran the story and there's also a link in there which I'll up as well to the auction website that had over a thousand images of various parts and images of the factory and everything that they're getting rid of and this is really sad news indeed and I had several people that emailed me and asked me what my thoughts were on this and I thought this would make an interesting discussion topic for the show and I'd love to hear you guys chime in on this as well I know that a lot of you shoot on classic cameras and a lot of you shoot film and I'd be interested in your opinions um, in the comments so please leave one if you would like um, my opinion is is that you know a company like Roloflex and I think you could put several other companies into this category as well people like Leica and Hasselblad that there comes a point when you've been around for a long enough time where you're competing with your former self, particularly if you're going to still make TLRs. And I know that in the last 10 years at least, uh, Roloflex have been manufacturing TLRs. They had electronic light meters in them uh, with varying degrees of reliability, but these cameras were you know, retailing at around five grand, which is a lot of money for a camera, and particularly one like a twin lens reflex that has some limitations to it. And this is kind of sad to see anybody go out of business, but I kind of have the feeling that Roly has been competing with themselves and probably were gone a while back because it's really tough to compete with your own used market. Um, in all fairness, Roly made several other cameras as well over the years. They've made several 35 millimeter cameras. Um, they've also had a modular, uh, several models that were modular like Hasselblad that had interchangeable backs and lenses and, and uh, even metering. Um, and Roloflex has been a wonderful company. And the difference is, is that if you look at Leica and Hasselblad, they've moved into the digital market. And truth be known, Leica has hasn't produced a film camera in years, and I don't think that Hasselblad has either. And that's a big difference is because they stay kind of relevant, and they go ahead and let their old cameras in the used market be itself. And if you want to buy a camera from that, they're not competing with that. And I, I'm not saying that that was Roly's business model, but I sure felt like, especially when they were still making TLRs, that that was the case. Um, I had one person that asked me in an email, you know, what I thought this meant for repairs and parts and things of that nature on the used market. You know, I think right away it probably doesn't mean too much because there's a lot of old Roloflexes out there and you can pull parts from dead cameras. Um, I don't know, you know, the people who do repairs. I think the person that probably is, you know, the go-to guy for Roloflex repair is a guy named Harry Fleener. And I'll link up to his website as well. I've never actually sent a camera to Harry, but um, I've considered doing this one because this one is in need of a, of a CLA at this point. It's got a little tracking issue when you get to the end of the roll of film and it likes to overlap the last two or three images. Um, so anyway all that can be fixed and I know that probably well I'm gonna guess that Harry probably has a lot of parts at his disposal considering that's all he does is fix Roloflex cameras but I don't know what that's gonna mean in the short term but I think it's gonna be interesting to see what it is in the long term now I'm kind of used to this because at one point in my life I was collecting a lot of old antique cameras and a lot of them like you know you look at things like Flexoret or even some of the Agfa or Ansco stuff um, you know, they've been out for a long time and there are no new parts being made for these things. Uh, you can generally get things fixed. I haven't seen that it's a big issue. I'd like to hear from you guys on this. Those of you who have had cameras repaired, you know, what is that like? What is the issue? Um, sometimes I do know that it can be expensive, but I still think that when you consider what these cameras do and what it's like to shoot on one, the expense isn't that bad. I think a CLA will probably run you between two and three hundred dollars depending on what needs to be done, assuming there's no major work to be done, but the fact that you bought these cameras used, you know, I, you will spend money on things, I understand that, but uh, for me it's kind of worth it. Uh, you know, and I've said this before when we did a bunch of episodes on TLRs, that there's a lot of restrictions that you have on a twin lens reflex camera. I mean, you have fixed focal length on the lens. Um, they did make several models of this. Most of them were 80 millimeter lenses. They had a telephoto and they had a wide angle and they had a handful of cameras like this one that were 75 millimeter lenses. And you know, you have a limitation there, the, the lack of a light meter in this model, um, you know, so you have to learn how to make an exposure manually. You have to learn how to, how to do that. Um, it does slow you down a lot, um, but there's something about shooting on this camera, the way it was built. These Roloflexes come from a day and age where it meant a lot 
it meant so craftsmanship meant something, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so, you know, if you look at stuff like right around post World War II that were coming out of Germany, it was amazing craftsmanship. This thing is a tank. It is. It, it, it everything moves like butter on here, though. I mean, it's just. If you compare this to cameras that are made today, um, most of the stuff that comes out of Japan, they cut corners to save on costs a lot, and I understand that. And so sometimes things have a little bit more of a plasticky feel than, than normal, and Roloflex were not like that. And it's sad to kind of see this era go by the wayside a little bit, where you know people put a lot of care and craftsmanship into what they were making, and you know it's a little bit gone. Um, anyway, wonderful cameras, and I'd love to hear from you guys and what your thoughts are on this, particularly those of you who have had any kind of antique camera repaired or what that's been like for you guys. Um, anyway, once again, guys, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it and share it with your friends. And remember to subscribe so you'll get more videos because we're doing a whole bunch of stuff these days. And one of the things that I've been wanting to do lately is to get back to basics a little bit and thinking about the Roloflex deal and, and, and get back to kind of some of the stuff we started with with this channel. I love doing the photo history stuff and we will continue to do a lot of that, but I really would like to sprinkle some darkroom back in there and some practical um, shooting tips and things of that nature, uh, film photography and all that good stuff. So anyway, um, so anyway, let me know your thoughts. And once again, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.